a very interesting concept uh, so even before starting off with threads i want to give you an assignment now i want you to write some piece of code what you have to write is uh, say you have a program you write a java program what this program is going to do is it's going to write say you want to write all integer values from 1 to 100 to file 1 and 101 to 200 to file 2 you write these integer values to a text file so it will be converted to a character and stored in a file so you write all the characters or you say integer values from 1 to 100 to file 1 this is a separate file and 101 to 200 to file 2 can you complete the code for this now write a java program to write say you can generate this car you know integer values in a for loop and write it to a file 1 to 100 to file 1 and 101 to 200 in file 2 please complete this we'll see how far we have understood file and you create a file object and then you start writing so you create a file object new file and then you give this file name file1.txt it's going to be a new file that i'm going to create and then whenever i'm going to write to an file what i need is a file output stream or you can use a file writer i'll use a file output stream here so it's file output uh, stream about and then you give the file object here it's very next thing what you are going to do is you are going to somehow write to the file what you are going to write is characters 1 to 100 right integers 1 to 100 so i'll have a for loop here int i is equal to 1 i less than equal to 100 i plus plus and then in this loop i'm going to use f4 dot write i'll write this integer value i to my file and then what i'm going to do is come out of this and then i'll close my stream right so if i want to write to a file uh, file 2.txt how will i write that i'll again create an object of type file2 right it's very simple i mean it's file uh, maybe obj1 obj1 will be my file 2.txt <coughs> and then again you have to use our file output stream let me create a file output stream here and then i am going to write to this new file obj1 and uh, what i am going to write to my second file i am going to write characters from 101 to 200 so let me just uh, put int i is equal to 101 i less than 200 i plus plus and then you do f4 one dot uh, write you write an integer value out so you write this i and then you come out of the loop and then you close this output stream so maybe we love us without saying our file writes are successful so let's go and write this one out a very simple piece of code we have already done this earlier so for this file write successful let me go to my uh, folder the file one is created it will have some characters written for the corresponding uh, you know 101 102 103 104 you will have lot of characters written to your file likewise for file 2 you have set of characters written so we not worry about what these characters are some encoded values are getting uh, written the only concept now is we understood the program that is we are writing to file 1 we are writing to file 2 right now the question is we have done this we'll analyze the problem a little bit closer 
file 1 gets written first. So when you take a look at this uh, uh, piece of code, what's happening here? It's a very simple thing, right? So how this execution happens, it starts from method main and then it starts executing it line by line. So which file gets written first? You write to file 1 first. Once this is done, file 2 gets written. That is how the code works. So there is a sequence of execution, a path of execution in your program. So this is called the path of execution in your program. And uh, file 2 write happens only after file 1. Now the question is, we are writing two separate pieces of data to se two separate sources. Why should file 2 write wait until file 1 write happens? Should we really wait to write to file 2 until file 1 write happens? So these two things are two separate activities inside my program. So the question is, can write to these two files happen simultaneously or parallelly? So while I am writing to file 1, I should also be writing data to file 2 because I am writing separate set of data here, separate, separate set of data there. So these questions come to our mind. By what we achieve by writing parallelly, there is no, no interdependency between these two tasks. So we can complete that quickly. So we can run many tasks parallelly. In operating systems, you would have already learned how applications and processes are run simultaneously, right? So the same kind of concepts will be coming here. Again, if you have learned database management systems, you know how transactions run concurrently. Why don't we serialize transactions? That's because it takes a lot of time for every transaction to be in queue and running. We run it parallelly, we can complete things quickly. So what we are looking for is inside our program, instead of having that one single path of execution, we can have multiple paths or we can have multiple independent paths that can run concurrently. So writing to file 1 is one part, writing to file 2 is one part. Can I run these two parts parallelly? That is the question. So here the question is, this is one block and this is one block. Can I run these two blocks or parts parallelly in my uh, program? So we need a program that contains two or more parts that can run concurrently. So how to do this? How to make these parts run parallelly? So you call this writing to file 1 an independent path of execution. You want to make it an independent path. It's not, it should not be a sequential path like what we have seen. In the thread main we start and write sequentially, right? Now this should run parallelly, this should run parallelly. This is an independent path, this is an independent path. Got it? So you should have many independent paths in your code. So how can you achieve such independent paths of execution by using threads in Java? The concept of threads allows you to make such independent paths in your code. A thread is an independent path of execution within a program. So you make writing to file 1 and file 2 independent of each other and they run parallelly, then each block is considered to be a thread and it is an independent path of execution within a program. Many threads can run concurrently within a program. So here we have seen two blocks, right? Writing to file 1 is one block, writing to file 2 is another block. So you have two independent paths or two threads. You are going to create two threads. So you can have many threads within a program. All Java programs have at least one thread known as the main thread. So when you take a look at this uh, program that we have written, main itself is a thread because it has got one sequence of execution, right? And it has got some memory allocated for it. So when you talk about the main method, you call that itself to be a thread. We are going to have two more threads, two more parallel parts running to our main. 